Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is Wildlife Resource Management Supervisor, Dan Halstead. Today we're at Coal Lake Wildlife Management Area. Dan, you manage the North Central District for Wildlife Management Areas. How many wildlife management areas do we have and how many acres? Mike, there's 226 wildlife areas in North Dakota uh, and amounts to about 218,000 acres. Okay, and what are these wildlife management areas? What's the purpose of these wildlife? These are areas that we manage for wildlife habitat. That's the primary purpose. Um, they, they also are there to enhance wildlife production in those local areas. And so we're trying to, A, provide habitat for wildlife, produce more wildlife in that area for people to hunt. And so they're public areas that people can go out and hunt on. In some cases, like here at Coal Lake, there's also fishing involved. So in, in cases where there's a river or a lake there, then there's some fishing opportunities at those areas too. Okay, and some of those wildlife management areas are pretty small and some are large. Right, they vary from some areas that are below 40 acres all the way up to uh, Lone Tree Wildlife Area at Harvey is about 30,000 acres. So big variance, lots of sizes all in between. Dan, are all these wildlife management areas, are they owned by Game and Fish? Actually, only about half of our wildlife areas are owned by the department. And the other ones are generally leased or have an agreement with um, another agency. For example, out here at Coal Lake today, um, the Department of Transportation actually owns Coal Lake. It was donated to them by um, Falkirk Mine and Great River Energy, and basically in lieu of the no mower areas on 83. And so we have a 99 year agreement to manage this area for, for the Department of Transportation. Also all our Lake Sac WMAs are owned by the Corps. Uh, Lone Tree is owned by the Bureau of Reclamation. So there's um, quite a variance of who owns the lands that we manage. Okay, and Game and Fish, I guess we should tell our viewers too, Game and Fish pays taxes on all these WMAs. Absolutely, we pay taxes. Uh, it's actually a payment in lieu of taxes, but it makes up the taxes on all the properties we own around the state. It's a large amount of money. You have some management practices. What are some of those practices on these WMAs? Sure. Our, basically, we really have three management practices that we concentrate on, and that is prescribed burning, haying, and grazing. And we've kind of found over the years that it's really important in these grassland ecosystems that you have some kind of disturbance. So those three things are kind of our basic grassland management tools. Okay, and right now is a busy time for your crews. What, what type of things are they doing? Oh, sure. Um, well, we've been, we've had a really busy May. Um, not very much rain this year, so the guys have been in the field a lot. But our, our typical days with, with our guys in the field start out in May with them out counting grouse in, in the mornings or counting pheasants in the mornings, then coming back and jumping on a tractor and starting to do food plots. We do a lot of food plots plots on our wildlife areas and primarily to produce areas of grain for the wildlife to feed on and it makes them better hunting areas because it tracks those wildlife species to that area and keeps them there. So do a lot of food plot work, a lot of tree planting in the spring. Um, we're using grazing management as a tool so I work with grazing cooperators quite a bit this time of the year. Um, we're also um, jumping into our noxious weed season and that's from about now on for until August that'll be our primary goal is to work on noxious weed control in our wildlife areas it's a really big task. There's some shooting ranges on some of our wildlife management areas as well. That's correct um, we have a number of shooting areas scattered out through the state um, this time of year our guys are primarily involved in keeping those cleaned up and keeping them going um, they get a a lot of use. Dan, these wildlife management areas, they get used a lot, uh, but there are some rules and regulations. And with the 4th of July coming up, let's start with fireworks right away. Okay, fireworks are prohibited on our WMAs. And there's several reasons for that. One is just the disturbance factor of the loud noises, obviously bothering wildlife and people that are trying to recreate on the areas. And the big thing is probably that um, our, you know, if you look around here, our Management objective is to have tall vegetation, okay? Fire hazard is a big thing. And it just generally isn't safe to be shooting fireworks on areas that have tall grass vegetation. 
So that, you know, that's really the primary reason they're outlawed, um, but also for the disturbance factors too, you know. Okay, uh, we do allow camping on some of our sure. wildlife management areas. Can get complicated, but explain right. that a little bit. Right, yes, camping regulations are somewhat complicated because they've, they vary around the state on different wildlife areas. But in, in general, it's a, um, a 10 day period that you can camp for. Uh, however, some WMAs, would have rules that maybe go all the way from not being allowed to camp at all or being closed on Tuesday and Wednesday. So you basically need to check our website and look for the regulations for the areas you are interested in camping at or go out on site and we'll have those areas signed that have non-typical regulations, I guess you'd say. Okay, are campfires allowed on wildlife management areas? Campfires are allowed unless there's a burn ban on in the county that you're in. So you need to check and make sure there's no burn bans on. You also need to be really careful because, as I said, we, we grow tall grass on our wildlife areas and fires can be kind of risky, so you have to be super careful. So just use common sense. Yep, use common sense. Another big problem we have on our wildlife management areas is litter. Explain that a little bit. Okay. Well, um, we spend a lot of our time trying to manage the habitat on these areas. And so we don't have a lot of time to be picking up trash. And it seems like the areas where people like to camp, that's where the trash is associated, you know. And so it's, we basically run our WMAs as pack in, pack out. So you need to take your trash out with you. Um, if, if you don't, you're going to be camping in a mess probably because we don't get out there a real lot to do that to clean that stuff up. So it's been pretty good, you know, people realize that and they help out some, but it only takes one bad apple to make a mess, you know, so. One, one thing we should also bring up, Dan, is, is can you leave items on our wildlife management areas like hunting blinds or tree stands or traps? Explain that a little bit. We have deadlines when, when you can, uh, when you have to take your tree stands off, when you can put them out there. Um, basically, it's you can't put your tree stands out until August 20th, and they have to be off by the end of um, by the end of January. And that also applies to trail cameras, ground blinds, those kind of things. And they have to be identified, you know, with either your name, address, and phone number, or an equipment number that you can get through the Game and Fish Department's website. A lot of great information. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. For more information on wildlife management areas in North Dakota, visit the Game and Fish Department's website at gf. .nd.gov. For Wildlife Resource Management Supervisor Dan Halstead and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.